This is Cleanne Jenkins, your Simply Fun Playologist, and I'm here today to talk to you about the July specials. Tibber's Tangrams is for ages three and above, one to two players, and it practices shapes and spatial reasoning. This one comes with a set of two floor-sized tangrams and a 32-page booklet that shows lots of designs for your kids to try and figure out. And then there's also an answer guide at the back that shows what shapes they need to use to make those. So this one is lots of fun and helps your kids practice geom geometry as they're learning. Alphabet Woods is for ages five and above, two to five players, and it practices alphabetizing and sequencing. In this game, players are practicing their alphabetizing skills as they build trees add branches and collect animals. So in this game what you're going to do is you are going to turn over a card and see if you can add it to an existing tree, keeping them in sequence. They don't have to be an exact sequence but as long as they're in alphabetical order or seeing if like you can add a branch over to one of the trees. Um, you're going to build your trees until they're at least seven uh, letters long and then you can add a tree top on the top um, and as you build uh, trees then you're collecting animals and the person who has the most animals at the end of the game is who wins rolling bones is for ages seven above two to four players and practices anatomy and probability in this game, what you're going to do is you're going to roll all 18 of your dice and place as many of the bones in the skeleton as you can. So like here, I could place the skull and the pelvis, and you're just going to put as many bones on as you can. Um, if you can't do your whole skeleton, then you can roll the remaining dice, but you have to set aside one die from each time. So if it's my first, or second time re-rolling, I set one aside. If it's my third time, then you set three aside because two extra from the next time. So anyways, something I really liked about this one is the instruction manual has the skeletal system on it. So you can learn the names of those bones as you're placing them. And then whoever gets the most bones without any gaps in sequences, uh, is going to earn the most points, and whoever earns the most points is who wins. Kayak Chaos is for ages 8 and above, 2 to 4 players, and it focuses on planning and predicting. In this game, you are either going to play or discard a card, and you can do up to 3 actions per turn. So first here we have um, the paddle cards. This makes you be able to move up 1 or 2 spaces. Um... So we could move here with our kayak, or we have these swerve cards, which allows you to move lanes in the riverbed. We can do one to two spaces here. We have a shift a river tile, which is a weather one. So if I did this one, then I could shift it like this. So I miss the rock and go through the swift currents instead. Um, we have the rotate a river tile. This one is awesome because like here, I could rotate this one so that it clears my path and there's no rocks in my path. Um, we have where you could swap two different tiles with each other and a life-saving tile, which makes it so that you can undo an action of one of the other players or something. So the first one to the finish line is who will win, and it was lots of fun. Kilter is one of our best sellers and is for ages eight and above, two to four players, and focuses on physics and fine motor skills. In this game, you are placing your blocks on one of the upraised arms on the seesaw. If you place it and it doesn't go down, then you can continue to play until the arm of the seesaw goes down. If it goes down, your turn is over and any blocks that fall off then get added back to your pile. Then play continues on, and the first person to get rid of all of their blocks is who will win. Raise the Roofs is for ages 8 and above, 2 to 4 players, and it practices strategy and problem solving. So in this one, you are using your strategic problem solving 
as you roll the dice and build your towers. You are trying to create the tallest combined tower to win the game. So you're going to roll the dice. It's going to tell you which colors that you can use out of the center here to build your towers. And then towards the end of the game, you get to add these black ones over here, which are the bonus pieces. And whoever has the tallest tower is who will win. Night Lights is for ages 10 and above, two to four players, and practices spatial reasoning and strategy. In this game, you are trying to make patterns with your blocks so that you can play your firework cards and be the first one to get rid of all six of your show blocks. So if I were this player right here, I would draw a block from the bag, and then I'm going to decide, on, based on my cards right here, what I want to play. So if I was trying to do this one, I would probably put this one down here as a purple, and then on each turn you can either place a block or move a block. So I could have moved this one down here if I wanted, or played that one. Now if you get a full thing like this, then you can put your card on there, and you get to put one of your show blocks on top of the firework card. Where this one is white, that's a wild, so I can pick any one of my blocks to place on top. And then it would be the next player's turn, and you're trying to be the first one to get rid of all six of your blocks. Zone to Zone is for ages 12 and above, two to six players, and practices spatial reasoning and probability. In this game, players roll the dice to strategically move across the game board while also blocking the movements of their opponents. The first player to move more than half of their pieces to the starting position in the opposite zone wins. So here I have rolled the dice and I've got seven. So I could either move one um, of my pawns seven spaces or I could move one five and one two. So I'm going to choose to move this one one two. Where I've got to the center you can jump to any other spot on the board. So I'm going to jump over here. So I'm in the zone I need to be in. And then I'm going to move this one right here and go one, two, three, four, five. And then I've actually trapped my opponent and they cannot move until I move my player back off of them. So that is something that makes it a little bit more fun. You can trap and you, if you get to three high, you can do barriers and then they can't move. They're kind of at your mercy. So this game's lots of fun and requires quite a bit of strategy. Last but not least, if you spend over $50 this month, you get this Hazel's Helpers slide puzzle for free.